lover of physical analysis. And um, really my background um, keeps moving me from one um, idea to another and from one occupation to another. But I am business analyst at heart and I think I will always be a business analyst at heart regardless of what I do. So my background is in computer science. I worked for many years as a business analyst. I also worked in communications, in change management, and um, I was looking at where to expand and where to take my skills next. So then I worked in business architecture, and now I have my own business, my own consulting company, and I also teach at Humber College here. So I ended up um, trying to do many things and I'm still hoping that, you know, a combination of those many things can work. So I coach business analysts, I create business analysis training courses, I teach students analytics, and I work with consulting, uh, as a consultant with companies, really to help them build their BA practices and architecture practices, because I think that that's the other part of it. You know, we can teach business analysts to be really good and brilliant, but we need to also educate the companies on the role of business analysts to give them that environment where they can really excel. So I think that both of those are important. Oh, great. That's a lot to unpackage. So I'm going to uh, dive right in. So when I first met you, I met you in a webinar session, uh, and I believe it was through the IABA uh, Bluegrass chapter. So give credit to the chapter. And one of the things that really resonated with me was all of the things that you just talked about, your background, it was, uh, you articulated that or displayed that throughout your presentation. I really got an understanding of, you know, the consult consulting, your understanding of the background and change management and all of that. So it really interested me so much in like how in how you developed your skills and how you continue to refine your skills, because you can tell that, you know, you, you're multifaceted and you have so many things to share. So, um, in thinking about the, like your BA career. So you've been, you know, you've been teaching, you've been consulting, all of that. When you first started out, where did, where did you start out at? I mean, I think about where I started out at and it's probably a much different space than yours, but was there uh, a defining moment or just things came together? I think there were definitely a couple of defining moments. And if I were to go all the way back and I don't want to age myself, but first I got started- <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in computers. That's where it all started, right? And okay. I didn't know anything about computer science. And I saw a book in the library about Fortran. And on a whim, I got that book and I started reading it. And that was my own introduction into the world of programming that I knew nothing about. And from then on, you know, one thing led to another. So I, I got a computer science degree. And uh, of course, I thought that I'm going to be a programmer, right? Because that's what everybody does. And I, I was pretty good at it at the beginning and I started to do it. And then I realized that it's not enough for me. And I would, I don't just want to sit uh, in front of my computer and program things. I want to talk to people. I want to figure out why are they doing this? What are you going to do with it? Why is it not working? And I, somehow through osmosis, I guess, I got into a bit of a business analysis role, even though it wasn't called that. I would talk to customers. I would propose better reports. I got into communications and into various things. And um, at the end of it all, um, when I, I, I moved to countries since then, because I was born in Ukraine, I got my degree in, in Ukraine. Eventually, when I landed in Canada, I had to kind of rethink where to start my career again. At that time, Java was all the, you know, all the rage. And I said, okay, I got to learn Java, right? Like Fortran and Basic and C++, it's all in the past. I got to learn Java. So I took my course, I took my certification, I did great, I liked the Java. Um, and then I said, well, now what? Now that I know a little bit of Java, do I become a programmer? And I felt something in me like, oh, do you really wanna be a programmer? I am not sure, I really like the idea. Then I actually went to a career counselor because I got, I felt really stuck and I felt unhappy and I didn't know where my career needs to take me. I went to a career counselor. I took a whole bunch of personality tests and we had lots of conversations, but really I think what that career counselor told back to me, what was I really telling them is that I also like working with people. And this is really how I came to um, 
business analysis because to me that was the perfect combination of technical skills knowing computer science just you know that logic of programming that i really loved and still love the logical part of it was working with people so i took some business analysis courses never looked back and uh, to me it's just that it's it's how your your aptitude what do you like to do and business analysis gives us opportunity to just apply all these different aptitudes working with people working logical understanding structures explaining it to others and um, that was my path probably different from uh, many others but um that's the story that that is an excellent segue and I didn't plan this, by the way, on that particular piece, but to really talk about what, you had, what you've been doing lately with uh, your career path, as far as, you know, uh, helping new BAs or uh, people to understand, you know, where they can go in their career. I've been looking at your uh, uh, consulting website, you know, the Why Change Consulting website, and said, in, in, have been looking at some of the articles and some of the videos and things out there that really says, you know, like, I'm a BA, what do I need to do to maybe change my career, understand what my career is? Maybe I'm not a BA. And, um, and so that, that whole mindset of, of understanding who you are and you may have uh, formal training in one thing, but really just be like, what does one person need to do to really say, you know, I'm good at maybe many things, but my passion is leading here. And so in some of the workshops that you're doing, I think you're really helping people to have that same experience, right? It's like, I like things, but what what is it that really drives me? What is my passion? And I think you have a passion for helping people to find their passion, quite honestly. Yeah. And all the conversations that I've had with you, it, 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 it inspires you to dig deep and think about, you know, what skills do I have? What skills do I need? What people do I need to meet and learn from in order to just elevate that? So would you, you know, maybe, you know, I'm sure others have not had the opportunity to look at and, uh, you know, absorb all of your, your uh your training and classes that you're offering. Could you tell, could you tell me about it and tell everyone about that? Yeah, absolutely. And um, if I can maybe start just from a little bit behind, because I think your question had a lot in it and I wanted to address it <laughs> in terms of just in general, you know, helping people and figuring out what you want. I really want to kind of step back and start with happiness because I think that's you know really one of the topics that you know on top of everything else really interests me. Like, why do people have feel happy what makes them happy what makes them excited about their life and i read all these interesting books about how different things you know trigger those hormones in our brain that give us that feeling right. of satisfaction and happiness and i read this great book it's called uh, i think drive about what motivates people so i think all of us need to really understand what motivates us because we want to be happy. And uh, mm -hmm. there was this um, tweet the other day that I said, your job, in your job, you need to either learn or earn and ideally both, but if it's neither, then move on. So to me, it's like, you want to learn and you, but you want to be happy with what you are doing. And, um, you know, that's part of what we want to figure out. And when, uh, when our, you know, when our kids, so one of my kids is in college and the others are just getting to high school and they're worried what they are going to select mm -hmm. as their career. And I tell them, look, we will help you. And there are so many professions you don't even know exist because now they joke, they say, Mom, I'm not sure I want to be a business analyst. You talk too much about analysis. I said, that's fine. <laughs> we'll find something else. But the reality is a lot of people will go to college or will graduate without having a good idea how many different occupations are out there. And maybe That's there is true. something out there for them that is actually fantastic, but they just don't even know what exists. So that was a little bit like business analysis was for me because everyone was a programmer back then, right? We didn't have right. titles. Mm -hmm. It evolved. Uh, so I think that everyone deserves to, to find an occupation where they are happy. And sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it takes several career changes. Sometimes for you to realize that you may enjoy, you know, being a project manager or business analyst or um, analytics expert, well, it needs to, you need to grow into that because maybe when you graduate, you have very other ideas in mind. And I think that's okay. So that's one of the things that I really, really I try to share in webinars and even in articles is that people change careers. That's fine. That's actually they good. Do. If you they discover do. five years after college that you don't like what you are doing, then you should move on. You should change it because you deserve to be happy 
you know, 7.5 hours a day, um, every day, because it's, uh, yeah, it's healthy. That's right. And it's, again, it's, it's, it's your life, right? It's your right. life. It's and your unless life. you, unless you inherit or win the lottery, you want to enjoy what you're doing. So right. business analysis is one of those interesting professions where it's not necessarily like mainstream. Like not many people go to undergraduate degree to do business analysis, right? You can I do totally agree with that. Right. communications, <laughs> computer science. Like there are many, many other degrees, but uh, I know a few institutions started to offer business analysis diploma, but it's not that mainstream. So, and, and that's why sometimes people are not sure how to do it. So I think that it's one of, it's like insurance agents. Like not, not everybody goes to take an undergraduate, undergraduate degree to become an insurance agent, but we do have insurance agents and we need them. So somehow they arrive at that. So I really, I really want to help. And um, what I was doing, uh, I guess, in the last year and a half since I started my company is really like communicate, share, and, you know, share stories. It's okay to change a job. Yes, you can become a business analyst. Yes, it's okay if you haven't been a business analyst before. You can become one. And that's what right. everybody else does. Like everybody has to go through that leap. It's not like everyone has to do an MBA degree. And a lot of what we do as business analysts is common sense and logic and communication. And those are things we learn in other jobs anyway. You just maybe need to apply them differently. And you know, from from employer perspective, I like I would rather hire someone who came from a different background, but was smart enough and hardworking enough to turn that around and learn right. and apply it. And now they really became a business analyst because they wanted it. And I would expect them to be a much better specialist, right? Right, right. Because they're they're happy. And you think about it. I, I love how you said that. I mean, first off, talking to you makes me very happy. As you probably have figured out, I very much enjoy our conversations and people want to be happy. And, and, you know, especially in their career, you spend a lot of time at work, thinking about work, engaging in work and all of that. And, and a long time ago, it used to be you got a job and you had to stay at the job. But now it's like you have, there are more opportunities to upskill, reskill, think about your skills differently. And I completely agree with you on the recognition of BAs, because I was thinking the same thing right before you said it, because it's when I started to become involved in business analytics, I've been in IT and project management and many things for many years, but I've been doing BA work, whether it was called out or not, because in most of the organizations I worked in, we didn't have a, a, a BA community. I mean, you had a project manager, you had IT leads, you had all these things, but people did BA work and were never, never called that. And so when I talk about actually BA stuff now, people will be like, well, what are you talking about? So it is a it, it, it is a skill that, or a trade or a profession that people typically find along the way, they don't, they don't go to school for it. And so hopefully with like conversations like this and the work that you're doing, people understand that it is a profession, it is a mindset, and it is pretty awesome because you get to meet people, you get to have great conversations and really ask those questions, why and what and how, and what can we do to improve? I mean, I used to call that back in the day when I was a process improvement manager. Actually, I was a BA on uh, steroids or, you know, like elevated because that's what I did, right? Asked all those questions, did all the work, but, but I wasn't called that. Yeah. So what did, what, how, how can, um, like with, with what you're doing, how can people understand and really get involved in the opportunities to re-explore and understand what their skills are and where to take that to next. Yeah, no, thank you for that question. I think it's, again, if you go back to happiness, you it's really important for everyone to understand what they like to do, what they're good at versus what business analysis requires. For example, what are those activities? And you know, in one of my webinars, I have a slide that says, what do business analysts do all day? Because it, and that's really the question. Like you really wanna understand what are you gonna be doing? Like, are you gonna be writing or typing or programming or testing? Like what are those activities? So I think that's a very important exploratory part. And again, as business analysts or as future analysts, you should be good at research and wanna do it. So do your research. What does it mean to be an analyst? I know, for example, I have some webinars on YouTube that you can watch for free. I'm sure there's lots of materials everywhere. Understanding that uh, is a first step. If you do believe that uh, you want to be a business analyst, or at least you're curious enough to explore more, 
again, there are so many resources, you know, there is articles, there is videos, there is free courses, there is courses that are not free, but maybe give you more. There is webinars everywhere. I think just that a lot of learning can happen, you know, in parallel maybe with your current job, because, you know, another thing is, that, that career transition, if you're really planning career transition, it, it's got to be a project. You can't just jump into it. You have to plan it as a project. So you have to do your exploration, a discovery. You have to plan your resources. You have to understand your timeline, how much you can afford in terms of time and money and, and your effort. And then you need to set a goal and figure out what are the steps that, so it, it's like in any project. So anybody who's doing any project management, you know, already is, thinking that way and then just start doing it step by step maybe you want to take a course for example i created a course called business analysis for professionals changing careers so what i was thinking is that you know everyone has done a little bit of business analysis before so stephanie you um did process improvement someone right. else maybe was docking you know and sometimes i say to people okay so you were a customer service representative you also did business analysis because mm -hmm. you needed to listen to your customers understand their problems, try them to help their problems. And if you couldn't help them, you needed to write it down in a structured way and pass it along to someone else who will help solve their problem. That's exactly what business analysts do, just maybe, you know, different type of problems. So, uh, so being able to go and um, build on top of the skills you already have and experience you already have means that you don't start from zero. You always start from somewhere. So for example, in, in my course, I keep going back to think about what you already know how to do. You know, you just need to tweak it. You need to look at it differently. And you need to maybe read some business analysis books to make sure you understand the terminology and you map it to what you know. And then if you go to those interviews, you know, it's never like, okay, I, know, I don't have any BA experience. No, you do. You you tell mm -hmm. them about business analysis activities that you did. Yes, you enable changes, someone mentioned in the chat. You um, you listen to customers, you communicate it, you um, capture requirements, you uh, train someone, you explain how to do things, you investigate the root cause of the problems, all of those activities. And then that's this is how you start. And then reskilling and upskilling is very important. Right. And a lot of it can be done in your current job. You know, maybe you don't have a BA job now, but if you want to get there, ask your employer. Maybe they actually are hiring business analysts in another department, and maybe they'd rather hire someone from within giving them training because you already know the business. It never hurts to ask. You can get seconded to another project for a couple of months just to get that experience. You can uh, shadow a senior business analyst and help them and learn from them. Even as a subject matter expert, for example, you may be in operations or sales or anything like that. Get involved in a project as subject matter experts. And we business analysts, we know that we love to get the best SMEs, right? From, from Because they help that us to figure things out. So become that Absolutely. SME on a project. You're helping the project. And as you work with a BA all the time, you learn from them all the time. And I know right. some BAs that came from Smith and they were excellent. So there is, I think, so many different ways to do it and, and definitely a lot of people who can help you. Right. Well, you know, I think about like part of being the IABA uh, Bluegrass chapter. I mean, we spend a lot of time on educational. We have, you know, the, our webinars, we have, you know, where you just reach out to somebody and, yeah. and we'll have conversations and help you and all of that. And, and what helped me was when I realized I, I wanted to learn more about the BA space and gain confidence and the skills that I had, because I felt that I had them, and, you know, I was kind of going through the same path you had, like, what do I know? What do I not know? What skills have I used in the past? What do I really like to do? Like when I go to work and I have 50 things that I have to do, like what thing really makes me happy? Which thing is it like that I wish I could do first and last and probably throughout the day? And a lot of it really is that business analyst work, even though it's wrapped up in a project manager or a lead or whatever, but those core fundamentals are always so much fun. Okay. It's back. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know if that was me, but anyway, I guess I got quite animated. So, so anyway, where, where I was going with this is like finding that passion and finding, you know, what you like to do and having like IABA chapters and having people like you that, you know, we can have these interactions and you have, you know, we have training courses. You have a lot of really great training courses on just, you know, like the roadmap 
And so what was fascinating to me lately was just having these conversations and, and saying, you know, we have newer, newer people to the chapter, newer people to the profession that are really trying to even understand, like, am I a BA? Is a BA career for me? Uh, do I have enough skills to actually do what you're talking about? Do I have enough skills to go to my current employer and say, let me help you here or to try to find a new job? And so I'm really interested in how people can really take what they have and really start to translate that into like, I do have skill sets. It really does mean a BA and then to work on gaining confidence in yourself. So when you talk to a new employer, your employer, and it isn't, you know, BA 101, like I know how to do technique 24 of X, that you can articulate that with confidence and really showcase your skills, even though it wasn't as a traditional BA. Can you help me understand like how I maybe can help other people gain that confidence? Yeah, no, I think you're hitting on a really important point because imagine you have someone really motivated and they start learning and figuring it out, but yeah, they lack that confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where you need peers to help you, right? You need a community uh, of other people who maybe are in the same position or a little bit ahead of you. So definitely this is a part where you shouldn't be alone and you are never alone. Uh, mm -hmm. So chapters like joining an IAB chapter is fantastic, right? Because there are study groups and, and workshops and seminars and just discussions like this, you know, like someone has coffee chats or, you know, the, the webinars like yours. And I know I've attended a few. So I think that that's really huge, right? Having that community, even joining some uh, LinkedIn communities and, you know, starting to chat and interact with people. Sometimes you can schedule one-on-ones with someone else find a mentor in your own job and, and get the advice. Like I, for example, um, what one of the other things I do is a one-on-one -on -one coaching. Like if you really feel you're stuck and you don't know who to go to, you can work with a coach maybe for a couple of hours and they can help you really zero in on things you do well and how to project it and how to be more confident about it and kind of give you some pointers about other things. But I think building that confidence is really important. And, and it's funny, you, you reminded me, um, so I run sometimes these BA career clinics and um, I've, I've been experimenting with it. It's like a small group of people who are all uh, searching for jobs, for example, or want to change their career. And what we do in the clinic, like we have kind of a, a whole program where we talk about career transition itself and maybe some of the fears that, you know, you may face. Right may stop you or may slow you down and about addressing those fears. And, you know, there's different ways. Sometimes it's all about gaining more knowledge. Sometimes it's about sharing with others. Sometimes it's about getting someone's advice or just, you know, someone telling you that they believe in you. So there's different ways to deal with different fears, but you have to deal with them. And then we do a little bit of like resume clinic. We critique each other's resumes and we practice answering interview questions in turn. And one of my participants at some point said, you know, at the beginning, I kind of, I wasn't sure if I want to do it because aren't we all like in competition? Like, you know, would, would actually being with this other people be, you know, a little bit competitive? Right. And I think, why would it be? You're all from different countries sometimes. You're completely different industries. You are going to be searching in different places, but you are in the same boat. So you can actually right. see each other. Maybe you're really good at answering this interview question, but you can tell this person, you know what, when you said that, I wasn't really, I didn't really sure what you mean. So just that feedback from other people in a small setting it is really important, whether it's your peers or IIBA chapter or your manager or even your friend. And you know, I would tell someone, if you, if you don't know who to practice your interview with, ask your partner, give them a few questions and answer those questions and then check, check with them. How did it sound? Did they understand what you mean? Was it clearer? Did they get a feeling that you know what you're talking about? Because this is what you want to project, right? Right. And, inter and tell you what, updating an interview or, or updating a resume and preparing for interviews, I think, are probably things that people don't find a lot of happiness in. Just saying, because it's, it's, it's tough, it's introspective, and it's just, it's just tough. I, and so having the opportunity to work with somebody like you that understands the career, understands that people need to find ways to find happiness or or develop their career, I think that's a great oppor opportunity to do that and just have somebody to bounce that off of because there's lots of 
lots of places and lots of questions out there, but are they the right questions that we should be asking for BA specific, especially if you're going for an interview of that type? So I think that's awesome. I encourage everybody to look to look at your site and, and check it out. Like I said, I've been looking at it, not that I'm changing careers, but it's just, you know, keeping fresh, trying to understand, you know, um, what's out in the industry and just for the mentoring aspect of it, like I said, we have, uh, and you helped us um, with an early morning webinar with the Philippines chapter, trying to help them, you know, get their chapter going and, but just confidence, confidence and understanding of where they could go in a BA career and feeling good about their skills and feeling that, you know, they have a community of people. They may not be close to us, but, you know, uh, in this day and age, you certainly, people are here for you and to be able to help you and, and whether it's, you know, reaching out to you or taking some of your classes or looking at your awesome roadmap, which I keep staring at and, uh, and trying to just, you know, understand like, you know, we're all in this together. And, yeah. and I don't think, you know, I think people sometimes feel that there's competition, but honestly, in the BA space with the interactions that I've had across the chapters, because there's a lot of like, you know, chapter events where it's multiple chapters together, uh, you know, either having conferences or just, you know, supporting speakers. I never actually feel competitive. I just feel like I have somebody that I can talk to and that can help me just get better at what I'm doing. So I think that's great that you're encouraging people to feel, don't feel competitive in the BA space, just feel empowered to have people that are there to support you, coach you, train you, mentor you, and get you to that happy spot that you, that you have. Absolutely. And I think that we all as business analysts, the more we elevate this as a profession, the better it is for everybody. Because I don't believe the world has enough business analysts, right? Look at all these problems. Every time you stumble into a system that doesn't work well, mm -hmm. or the website where you can't find anything or customer service, that is really, really horrible thing that maybe they didn't have a good business analyst. So I think we need more of them. And you guys are doing incredible job uh, and your chapter because you, you like you have so much experience in helping other chapters I know you always invite other chapters to your events and you put a lot out on LinkedIn so just looking at you and how you are supporting all of this community I think that's a really really good example well thank you and thank you for always supporting us and helping us and so I have as you know like about a thousand more questions I can ask you, but I think it's probably would be a good time that if anybody that has joined us, we have a lot of people from very different places that may have questions for you. I don't want to steal all your time, even though I'd love to do that. So Aaron or Retta, do we have any questions or people that want to uh, talk to Yulia and, and get some of their questions answered? Sorry, I'm looking in um, the thingy here. Okay. Will the recording and trans tr transcript be available? Yes. Um, Aaron, is this going up on our YouTube channel? So we should be able to find it via that route or it should be attached to the follow-up email as well, correct? Okay. All right, so if, if there aren't any questions, I do have a question for a couple people in the uh, that has joined us, if they don't mind. And Ennis, are you oh. still here? Are there any? Um, there's one with a hand raised. Etoon okay, Emily's. I don't think I said it right, but you should be able to talk if you'd like to ask a question. Hello? Maybe they're maybe they're still on uh, on mute. Maybe just using the chat then would would work as well. You should be able to. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, so, so Ennis looks like raised his hand as well. How okay. do I unmute? Um, you should be able to speak. I think you, Aaron, has unmuted everyone. Or you so should Ennis, be able to unmute you, now. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Okay. Hey, Ennis. So um, I just want to thank you all for this great session. And uh, what I say with it is that just I have a comment, okay, that um, I think for difficult and complex problems, okay, that we are facing in the companies, okay, the only one who can resolve these issues or even can articulate the issues is the BA. Mm -hmm. uh, what I see, what I see that, okay, we have different SMEs, different 
people, different professions, okay, when they face an issue or problem, they just cannot solve it themselves by all their own. They need a business analyst to be with them in order to support them, especially in troubleshooting and finding or recommending other solutions, okay, that can benefit themselves, uh, these SMEs or even the workers themselves or even the organization as a corporate, okay, and at the end, the project as an all. So uh, I wanted to just say that comment and thank you. Okay, thank you, Ennis, for that. And I mean, you bring up a good point. It's, you know, a lot of the, the information that Yuli has provided and you know, has really related to the fact that, you know, people do need BAs and, and BAs need to be comfortable to be able to go along with SMEs. And even if they're not, um, and leaders, even if they're not portraying themselves as a BA, but it is a very critical skill and it is very much needed um, a much needed activity to happen. And thank you, it's nice to see you. Uh, Ennis was, uh, is from Saudi Arabia and he, we had an opportunity to help him um, in some of his uh, colleagues uh, upskill in the BA skills. So it's always great when he has comments and uh, I always enjoy hearing from him because, you know, as he has, this has been growing in the BA space, it's really amazing to see uh, how far you're progressing and all your achievements. So. So you guys you. are really helping everyone across the globe and, and working with them. That's amazing. Um, I, I just wanted to also add to the comment and that Anna's made. I think that this is exactly the part where we need to talk about the company, right? Because there's always two sides to any relationship and two sides to any challenge. So the BAs, yes, we need to help them grow and make them more confident and realize how they can help in different ways. And it's not only about software, right? It could be a business process change. It could be a role discrepancy. So it doesn't have to be technical, but it's also about the That's companies. Right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. employers elevating the role of business analyst and supporting them and, you know, even allowing them. So I had this, uh, I had this picture of, you know, like the clouds and just tops of the buildings taken from the clouds. We can't keep BAs atop the clouds. They need to be able to come down to the streets and really help to analyze and diagnose the problems. And sometimes maybe even BA would like to do that. And they've learned that it's important, but if maybe they're not allowed to, like, oh, don't bother the people, you know, over there on the front lines with your questions. So it's up to companies to foster that business analyst mindset and to foster this environment where A, you allow BAs to help, you support them, and you make this, everyone understand what this role is about so they can do their job better. So it's also about companies and employers promoting that. That's excellent. That is an excellent observation. Just, I wanna say a, a, a last comment. Uh, recently, we've started to provide uh, awareness sessions, okay, regarding our profession, which is the BS analysis, okay, and our company in different departments. So like every day we will have like half an hour, uh, a session awareness uh, provided to the to those departments. Okay, just to let them know what's the BA, what's the business analysis do, what's the activity that we do, uh, where do we fit in the projects? Okay, how we can help them? Okay, to resolve their day-to-day -day activities. That's excellent. Yes. So the, the sorry, the question I had. Um, like what has been my experience i'm currently working as a senior ba for um an oil and gas company in calgary alberta and what i find is um from the experience i've had over the years is that in a lot of companies the structure is such that the ba um lives in the shadow of the pm if i'll put it that way um i find myself working on that some pms who sometimes I'm more experienced than, or, you know, like, it, it seems like uh, no matter how you try to um, advance, like I try to advance my career, I just find myself ending up just as one piece in the puzzle for this massive project, which the PM has all the power to he can even determine that he doesn't want me on that project or or not, regardless of how valuable, you know, I might be, but ultimately he wields all the power. He makes much more money. So in my head, I'm like, why am I, <laughs> why am I talking myself in this small corner? Why, why don't I become the PM and be the one who calls the shots? He's the one talking to the steering committee, right? I'm just there in the, 
just a piece of the puzzle. So that's one challenge I have, how I find myself just always ending up under 1 p.m. And in my head, I'm like, okay, to progress my career, I think I need to take the next step and become a PM myself <laughs> so that I'll be the one calling the shots. Yeah. It's an interesting challenge, isn't it? And, you know, and at Tune, because they, they often get paid more and, yes, sometimes they will more power. And, you know, sometimes it depends, of course, on the dynamics. But, yeah, it does happen. But, uh, and this is, I think, the perfect moment for you to feel... <laughs> Move on. Move, move, move higher, right? And just being a, a senior BA on the IPM. Yeah. So um, I can share maybe through Stephanie later on, I can share a couple of links of the articles that I have about some business architecture diagrams and some other business architecture tools that you could start with. Because again, business analysts are really, I mean, you're the best person to learn about that. Um, so there is a business architecture and community, and there is an organization um, that is even offering, I think, some certifications. But I think for you learning about business architecture is, it's really like, you know, an MBA. If you do an MBA degree, it's kind of being like a business architect, right? Because it's really about you helping to define strategy, to uh, define value chains for your company, to uh, to take those goals and objectives and break them into manageable project goals and build the roadmap for organizations. So a lot of business architecture skills are really around strategy and strategic analysis and like enterprise analysis. If you look up those concepts, you'll find a lot of um, information there. And you can, again, in your current job, you can see if you can start applying that a little bit, right? You know, uh, offer your services, for example, for during the planning exercise in terms of maybe kind of going level up in your diagrams or in your presentation and give it a try that way. It's excellent advice. Yeah, thank yeah, you don't very much. Yeah, don't give up. Never give up. Yeah. For sure. And don't don't settle for PM mm -hmm. just because they have more power if it's not what you love. Because you know you may make more money, but you may not be happy. If you are happy, that's fine. But just explore other opportunities for sure. Because you want to be happy long term and enjoy what you are doing. Yes. Thank you. Uh, do we have any more questions? Mm. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, to the gentleman that um, was talking about the project manager and whether to transition to a project manager, don't. I have been a uh -huh. BA for over 30 <laughs> years. I love it. He keeps turning off. I'm not sure what's happening there, but somebody will diagnose that later. <laughs> so, Yulia, thank you so very much for meeting with us or meeting with me, meeting with us today and having this conversation. I know we're running a little bit late on time. And I have a lot of links that Yulia has shared with me and will be sharing with me that it will make sure that all of you that have attended today get them. Um, I 100% recommend that you go out to her Why Change uh, um, website and check out the offering there and just follow her in general because I do and uh, it gives me great happiness and I also have these opportunities then to meet and talk to her. That was actually one of my goals, by the way, was to make sure that someday I had a chance to do